Hello and welcome to Physiology Open. In this video, we will discuss two aspects of anterolateral spinothalamic tract. One its pathway and the other somatotopic arrangement of the fibers in the spinal cord. And there will be one question for each aspect. So try to solve this question on anterolateral spinothalamic tract. In the question, there are two statements. First statement is an assertion and the second statement is the reason for the first statement. Now you have to choose from the following five options. You can pause the video and think about the answer. We will come back to the question after looking at the concepts of anterolateral spinothalamic tract. Anterolateral spinothalamic tract carries pain, temperature and crude touch sensations from the periphery to CNS except from the face. So here is shown a region of the skin with receptors. The first neuron is a sensory neuron with peripheral receptors on its end. From there, these sensory neurons enter into the spinal cord dorsally and synapse with another neuron in the grey matter of the spinal cord. See, we will draw three separate lines carrying these three different sensations from the region of the skin. So these neurons from the peripheral receptors to the spinal cord are known as first order neurons. Second order neuron arises from the grey matter, crosses to the opposite side along the anterior white commissure and travels in the anterior and lateral part of white matter of the spinal cord. Remember the name of the tract is anterolateral spinothalamic tract. So it travels in anterior and lateral aspects of white matter of the spinal cord. Anterior part carries crude touch sensation, so we will draw touch line anteriorly while lateral part carries pain and temperature sensations. So the other two lines we will draw in the lateral part. So pay attention here that synapse is occurring in the grey matter where cell bodies of neurons are located. But the axons ascend in the white matter of the spinal cord. Now the second order neuron reaches to the thalamus and synapses in the ventral posterolateral nucleus of the thalamus. From there, the third order neuron arises and reaches to the somatosensory cortex via internal capsule. So this is anterolateral pathway. Okay, let's come back to our original question. In this question, reason is the correct statement. That we have seen that second order neuron of anterolateral pathway crosses in the spinal cord. But if it crosses and there is injury to the spinal cord, say suppose right side, you see that the already crossed fibers of left side are traveling on the right side. If you trace the pathway, you will understand that pain and temperature sensation of opposite side of the body are affected. And that too which are coming from below. Before we go further, take a look at another question. In this question, tell whether the following statements are true or false with respect to anterolateral spinothalamic tract. Again, I will encourage you to pause the video and think about the answer and we will discuss the question after discussing the concept. To solve this question, you should know how anterolateral spinothalamic tract fibers are arranged in the spinal cord. Now in this diagram, the nerve fibers carrying sensation from one area of the skin are shown. But how the nerve fibers carrying sensation from multiple areas of the skin are arranged in the spinal cord? To understand this, we will see the pathways from four different regions of the skin that are supplied by nerve fibers of sacral, lumbar, thoracic and cervical region of the spinal cord. So let us suppose the pathway which we saw was of sacral region. Now lumbar, thoracic and cervical fibers ascend from successively higher regions. So the fibers from lumbar region enter lumbar spinal cord, cross and then ascend. But you see in the spinal cord, they are ascending medial to the sacral fibers, as if the sacral fibers are pushed laterally. Similarly, successive higher thoracic fibers and cervical fibers ascend further medially. So lines from different regions ascend parallel in a very organized somatotopic manner. So if we see the cervical cord, the fibers arranged from medially to laterally are cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral. But if you see the thoracic region, cervical fibers of spinothalamic tract will not be present here yet as they enter the spinal cord at higher level. So here you will see thoracic fibers, lumbar and sacral fibers arranged medially to laterally. This is very very important because if you know the pathway and how the fibers from different regions are arranged in a spinal cord, 
you can actually detect the site of the disease just by examining the pattern of sensory loss. Okay, now let us see our question. In this question, first statement is false. The arrangement of fibers of anterolateral spinothalamic tract from medial to lateral is cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral. So, cervical fibers is said medially in the spinal cord with respect to sacral fibers and not laterally. So, that means any disease which is developing centrally will obviously affect cervical fibers first. So, second statement is true. On the other hand, an extramedullary disease that is a disease developing outside the substance of spinal cord will affect the sacral fibers first. So, third statement is false. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do not forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.